Guzman and myself, Elijah, are excited to share some information about our upcoming V2X demonstration projects program. So we are recording this webinar, and both the slides and the recording will be shared on our website. Um, so next slide. So questions will not be answered during this webinar. Um, please put any questions you have in the Q&A function of this webinar, and they will be answered on the RFP page by the end of this week. So moving onwards, who is MassCEC? So MassCEC is a quasi-state economic development agency dedicated to accelerating the growth of clean energy across the Commonwealth. So we fund climate solution innovation to meet Massachusetts emission reduction goals while growing the state's clean energy economy. And Somia, Jasmine, and myself are part of the clean transportation team. And our specific efforts often focus on the commercialization of clean transportation technologies. So I'll add again that these slides and the recording will be shared afterwards. Please put any questions you have in the Q&A function of this webinar, and we'll respond to these questions after the webinar on our website. So forging onwards, um, before we discuss the V2X demonstrations program, I wanted to provide a bit of background. So the EVIC, the Electric Vehicle Infrastructure Coordinating Council, was authorized by an act driving clean energy and offshore wind in 2022. This act, which you may be familiar with, is often called the climate law. And it required EVIC to report on strategies to establish an equitable, interconnected, accessible, and reliable EV charging network. So the EVIC, um, which included members from the EEA, DPU, DOER, MBTA, DOT, and and other state agencies uh, held a number of public meetings on state EV infrastructure strategy before they released their assessment about a year ago. And then this February, the EVIC awarded Mass CEC $38 million of ARPA funding to deploy four programs that increase access to charging infrastructure in the Commonwealth. And as you may be aware, this ARPA funding is subject to several timeline requirements. Um, recipients of ARPA funding must allocate and contract the funds by December 31st, 2024, and expend all the funds by December 31st, 2026. So forging onwards, uh, as I mentioned, this program is one of four EVIC programs we'll be seeking support on this year. Uh, in June 2024, we solicited feedback on each one of these programs through a notice of intent process. And if you look at the end of the RFP, um, you'll see we organized some information from this NOI process there. So now that we've provided some context, I think we can jump right into the program. So why are we running this program? Um, V2X technology, which includes vehicle to grid, vehicle to building, and vehicle to load, allows for EVs to act as energy storage which potentially reduces the need for T&D upgrades and new power plants while increasing grid reliability. And hopefully this can reduce costs for taxpayers, reduce their energy footprint and increase grid efficiency. However, as you may be very aware, V2X technologies are relatively nascent and people looking to adopt these systems often face a complex technical landscape that can be quite different from one site to the next. So Mass CEC and maybe you as well, are trying to change that with this program. We're looking for support from consultants with relevant expertise to serve as a technical consultant and project manager for this program, which will help deploy several V2X pilot projects across the state and create guidance materials. And we have just under $6.2 million in funding to make that happen. And as I mentioned earlier, these funds need to be expended by Mass CEC by the end of the calendar year 2026. This represents about a two-year timeline, assuming we finish contracting with the selected team by January 2025. So moving into goals. Um, the goals of this program include increasing access to V2X technology options and reducing energy costs and grid constraints, highlighting innovative V2X models that can be replicated and scaled across the Commonwealth, developing resources for siting in Massachusetts to implement V2X projects independently, and ensuring that small and diverse Massachusetts businesses are included in the program and meaningfully compensated to foster workforce development. And with that, 
I will hand it to Somia to discuss the scopes of work. Hi, everyone. Like Elijah said, my name is Somia. I'm a program administrator on the clean transportation team at MassCEC, and I will be going through the scopes of work that will be written out in the RFP. So for scope one, which is program management and reporting, we expect that the consultant to conduct will conduct ongoing program management while completing additional tasks. These include developing a data collection plan, submitting quarterly reports, as well as a final report. Scope two, which is the identification of the V to X projects. This will include the consultant designing a selection process to identify specific types of projects, as well as the locations to participate in this V to X program. Scope three, which is the actual deployment of the V to X projects. This will include the consultant team providing technical assistance, oversight, and project management throughout the implementation and deployment process for the sites that were selected in scope two. The tasks in this scope also include providing implementation, procurement, and construction assistance, as well as developing a maintenance and operations plan for a site host that can be used after the length of the program. In scope four, which is the development of V2X guidance, MassEC will be looking for the technical consultant to develop a guidebook on V2X technologies and the deployment process. This guidebook will identify barriers and considerations while deploying V2X technologies. And the primary tasks associated with this scope include conducting research and analyzing existing V2X programs, conducting outreach and stakeholder engagement, and creating and submitting public-facing guidebooks as well as bond pagers. So this slide was created as a visual representation of what the length of this project will look like. Scope one, which is program management and reporting, this will be continuous throughout the lifespan of the program. This includes the quarterly reports, that will be submitted as well as consistent meetings with MassCEC. Scopes two and three will be completed in succession of one another, while the guidance created in scope four is expected to be completed near the end of the program, but will also be worked on throughout the length of the program. As you read through the RFP that we have published, you can learn more about the specific deliverables that will be submitted in each scope. For example, in scope two, the selected consultant is expected to submit a memo summarizing their preferred types of V2X projects, as well as the selected project locations. In scope three, the projects will be deployed and overseen. In general, MassEC anticipates that the selected consultant will identify projects and locations that will help prove out what common barriers are for the deployment of V2X technologies and that the learnings from the selection and deployment of these projects will help inform the guidance that's created in scope four, and that this guidance can then be used to deploy VTX technologies in the future. And with that, I will turn it over to Jasmine to talk a little bit about the application details and the process of applying. Hi everyone, my name is Jasmine. I'm also a program administrator on the clean transportation team at MassCEC and I'll be going over some of the application details. So for eligible applicants, um, any qualified consultant or professional with re relevant experience is eligible to apply um, and applicants are encouraged to form teams comprised of multiple entities um, who will work together on a proposed project. And MassCEC will be selecting one lead technical applicant designated to oversee the program. Um, this program also adheres to supplier diversity guidelines and applicants are strongly encouraged to include diverse suppliers and Massachusetts-based vendors and small businesses. MassCEC strongly encourages applicants to aim to allocate 25% of the total proposed budget to diverse suppliers on the applicant team. And just a note on this percentage, 25% is encouraged, but we recognize that this goal is aspirational, uh, and we'll talk a little bit more about this later in the presentation. 
And so to apply for this RFP, proposals must include all of the components listed on this slide, which will be available on the V2X webpage on the MassTC website, and also in the RFP document itself. Proposals must be submitted electronically to the clean transportation email and proposals are due September 19th. MassCEC also has resources available to assist with the application process, including a Slack channel that will provide prospective applicants with a forum to share ideas and form partnerships. And MassCEC will post updates and announcements in the Slack channel as well. Um, any questions about the application can also be sent to cleantransportation at masscc.com uh, until September 9th. And then um, we'll post answers on the FAQ section of the RFP webpage on a rolling basis until September 12th. Access to the RFP document and more information about the program is also available on the V2X demonstration projects webpage as well. And then just a brief overview of the timeline of the application process. So we released NOI responses in July, um, or we received NOI responses in July, and then we released the RFP a couple of weeks ago in August. Um, we'll be accepting questions until the 9th, posted onto our FAQ page by the 12th, and then applications are due on the 19th. And then I'll pass it back over to Somia to talk about some of the questions on the application. Thank you, Jasmine. And thank you to all of you who submitted questions while registering for this webinar. These questions that I'll go over are some of the questions that we received. And as a reminder that all of the questions that, that are being asked in the chat, as well as the ones that are asked through our clean transportation email, will have their answers posted to the RFP page. Um, to, so to briefly go over some of these questions, how is this program related to the Justice 40 requirements? This program advances President Biden's Justice 40 initiative, which is linked in these slides, which made it a goal that 40% of the overall benefits of certain federal climate, clean energy, affordable and sustainable housing, and other investments flow to disadvantaged communities that are marginalized by underinvestment and overburdened by pollution. Um, all the funded, all of the uh, funds awarded through this program specifically are also subject to this requirement. And this program will also help both the Commonwealth and federal government achieve their emissions reductions goals. Another question is that the RFP mentions that applicants are strongly encouraged to allocate at least 25% of the proposed funding to diverse suppliers. Will proposals that do not achieve this 25% be considered? Like Jasmine said, we encourage applicants to aim for this goal, but recognize that this is aspirational. So all proposals should provide responses detailing how their program will support suppliers, vendors, and businesses that are often underrepresented or underserved. But proposals that do not meet this goal should also explain and describe the challenges that they face to meet this goal, the 25% goal. Will there be a separate RFP for V2X pilots? And if yes, what is the anticipated timeline? There will not be a separate RFP unless the selected applicant team prefers to re release a separate RFP and they can still meet the, select the strict ARPA timing requirements. Teams that apply for this program should have the ability to plan for and deploy each of the projects for this program that are listed. Will the attendee list for this webinar be shared? No, MassCEC will not be sharing the webinar list, but we encourage applicants to join the Slack channel to form connections and ask questions there as well. Continuing with some additional questions, yes, applicants may, be par may participate in multiple application teams. Any qualified consultant or professional that can help achieve the scopes listed in the RFP is encouraged to apply. Mass EC in general is open to a variety of application teams. We encourage applicant teams to have expertise in engaging with program audiences and installing relevant infrastructure for this Vita X program. Can I apply if my applicant team is not all Massachusetts based? Yes, but we strongly encourage Massachusetts based teams. To reiterate the term length of this program, funds will be allocated and contracted by December 31st, 2024, so by the end of this calendar year, 
and work is expected to begin with the selected applicant team in January 2025. All funds will be paid out to the but to the technical consultant by December 31st, 2026. And are national labs eligible? Yes, national labs may be part of applicant teams. And our final question that we received um, and included are, is that are areas served by municipal light plants eligible for this grant opportunity? And the answer would be yes, that MLPs are eligible. So with that, that brings us to the end of our webinar and the end of our slides. Thank you all for taking the time out of your day to learn more about this program and attend this webinar. Um, as a reminder, please feel free to ask any questions in the Q&A chat, as well as email us at uh, cleantransportation at massceec.com. And the questions will be posted to our RFP website. The slides and the recording for, the, for this webinar will be posted by the end of this week. Um, so thank you all for joining and have a great rest of your day. Yeah, thank you, Somia, and thank you everyone again for joining. Um, we'll, we'll leave this webinar open for a few more moments in case you want to add additional questions in the Q&A. Um, if you're not able to get your questions asked right now, please feel free to email us at cleantransportation at masscec.com or ask your questions on the Slack channel. Um, so yeah, we'll we'll stay on for a minute or two and um, if you have any additional questions, please put them in the Q&A.